I, I moved office. I'm uh, living the life of my dreams. I'm surrounded. Fantastic. I hear Fiji's quite nice this time of year. They didn't ask for a mask. They didn't ask for nothing. They just said, come on down, Captain Sweet. We've been waiting for you. Yep. We've got, a, we've got a shack. A shack on the beach ready for you. A year's supply of coconuts. You're all set. <laughs> you have coconuts? <laughs> <laughs> you can't, oh, you can't see it. The problem with the back thing, you can't show anything. Unless, I mean, I have uh, had a call with a guy, I think it was last week about this time, who had a very professional green screen. It was lovely. And he was just putting it on and off, swapping it around. It. And, and if you've got a green screen, it really does look very good. Yeah. Um, well, there's some, I think you can get like a big circle that wraps around your chair. So you, you don't even, the technology of the day. <laughs> so, uh, I think George was, uh, or Gregory was working on his job site. So he was saying he might be a bit late, as I said. Okay. Uh, so we could uh, ramble away until he shows up, if you want to do that. We could ramble, we can ramble, shuffle, all sorts of verbs. Got a whole lot of verbs today. Are you in a chilly place? Um, yeah, it's a funny one because Basically, this flat, um, the boiler is in the kitchen and I'm in the back and this room does get quite cold, but I've got my Arctic sleeping bag here and William quite likes it cold. So he likes wearing big jackets and feeling just cozy. He, he is a very accomplished, grumpy old man. He's in his late 50s and... Very, he's, yeah, he's great. He's like, uh, I just draw, I'm just, I'm better at feeling shit than I am at feeling good. <laughs> That's just the way it is. <laughs> so well, he's accomplished at being grumpy. He's, he's expert, expert grumpy. level, expert level. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just one of these journey and he's been around he's got such a long history of so many things and exploits and he was quite a senior artist in berlin in the back in the day maybe 20 years ago and he's done all sorts he's senior senior cracker cranial psychotherapy trained he's uh, contact improvisation all of the, the whole kinky movement in berlin he's cross boundaries, all sorts of things. He's accomplished pianist. He was a composer for music and film. Mate, he's written three albums, none of them published at all. He just, it's all in the front room. And he basically just sort of mainly sits in the dark and just breathes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have so much to look forward to. Well, he's yeah. basic, yeah, he's based, but he's got to that point where he's, He's read so much, seen so much, done so much, and just looks at it all and goes, well, you know, no one can, can it's like the first words out of anyone's mouth to him. It's like, excuse me, are you trying to sell me something? So, oh, you moving on and he can smell it like a hundred meters away. So he's got this lovely van, a bit like yourself, camper van, and he, he previously bought it with the idea of this flat he's in is a shared, it's like shared housing or co cooperative. So he doesn't have to pay that much and he can go off for six months. So that's what's happening. At the end of April, he's off somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, I actually, the, the guy who's moving in is a friend of mine who I introduced him to and he's also an artist. And so he's going to move in here and that's nice. That's so I have until the end of April to my next moves in my game. Ah, uh, well, that's, that's good. That's a couple of, what's that? End of April. So a month, a month, five a month. Yeah. Just over a month. Cause I was thinking that we all seem to be in a very similar position 
of great idea, no funding. And sort of rumbling around in that. And I was thinking, you know, if there's three people who kind of like we all have sort of put our stuff together in a sense. I don't know about you and Gregory, but I, I see that it could. But you guys are the weak, you guys are the weak link. <laughs> well, you certainly have all your stuff and you've got names for things, you've got maps and so on. But I'm, you know, just I forget if we talked about this the other day, but basically the most of the chats I've been having recently are about um, the, the people I've met uh, through the work that Chris was doing. So there's now agreements and more understanding there. So I think there's going to be funding for me to come in and organize a lot of it, shape it, and then create some trainings. And there are those links between, you know, the CL, what, you know, what you're doing there and, and other other areas so I think something's slowly coming together but uh, I'm just waiting on Darius and France to come together uh, okay I'm, I'm Darius I'm speaking to him on Sunday night and he's been doing all sorts of networking and business relationships and trying to get funding so I might find out on Sunday hey man he says hey I've got the money right well, but you're, that you're, you're, yeah, you're going to Scotland. That, that can be. and that's also, but though for somebody else's work, not for your specific game. Well, it's it, it is. I'm going to gramify it. Ah, which is basically the image I have is for me, and I've got to talk to because the thing is the tricky thing. It was well, not tricky. The thing is that it's so it, Chris before he died literally the month, you know, and he died unexpectedly, of course, just suddenly, that he had passed the torch. I forget who spoke about this, so, to them, to France and Darius. So ultimately it's their decision what happens next. And they were felt when he died like, oh, and then I come back and they go, hey, great. You know what this is about, can you help? I said, sure, let's talk. So we're now just gently talking and it's just now to find out to do what. I, I, I think from the conversations I've had with them that they are of a similar mind to me, that this is not about presenting a beautiful big apple tree full of content. This is Chris's tree, come and pick off it. I will help you eat it and enjoy it. It's more like let's trim it right down to the essence and take the seeds and say, right, this is ultimately what it was about. I'm going to plant and create some new stuff. If you're interested in the content, here's two books and some courses and stuff. You can you can read it and do the content. I can create all that online. And if people want to be guided through it, I can guide them through it because I was there when it was made. But as for me to, okay, this is a workshop based on Chris's work. My name's Graham. I'm, no, I'm going to, I, I might pull from it, of course, frameworks and structures, but um, I'll I'll be doing my own stuff, and it's mainly it's exactly the question I was chatting with Deepak today is like what what exactly is my work? Which uh, well, I mean, I, my answer always intuitively is my work is me. I'm shaping myself into that something, and then, but it's the exchange of the money stuff. Well, you are a piece of work. Well, we're all pieces of work, aren't we? We're all. <laughs> okay in some ways today i thought you know ultimately it's all going to become entertainment you know yeah. no matter how serious yeah. you get or want to develop things everything's just becoming enjoyable yeah entertainment and personal development i think are are going to slide together yeah it's going to be entertaining to watch people go through their own personal development <laughs> yes ed edutrainment is one of the words edutrainment because entrainment was a big thing for Chris. And it's a bit interesting. I mean, entrainment as in if, if, for example, you're walking up a mountain, then if there's three people in front of you, actually with physics, the person at the back does less work. So the same with your flying the whole flock of seagulls stuff. And 
the way the efficiency. So if people are actually modeling behavior and have a, have a strength to them and a vibration and a, an energy, then people can just relax and go with it. And entrainment, like with frequency, with like the Grateful Dead had two drum sets, they did two drummers. And when these guys were in, you know, the, the vibration. So that's an art, the entrainment stuff. And I was talking again with, with, with Deepak today about this idea of when students come or, or anyone comes, in some way they have to submit to you or surrender is a better word, I think, surrendering to your guidance so they don't have to think. They can just relax and you say, okay, we're going to do this now. And then they do it. There's no, excuse me, I want to <clears throat> challenge every single thing you're saying and discuss the philosophy. No, well, that's for different forum but right now we're doing this okay and if they continue to challenge it's okay you may leave <laughs> um and i find that harder with let's call it existential work you know who are we what's going on what do we do next whereas if it's very mechanical like as i used to teach tennis i was a coach of tennis tennis is mechanical it's it's just the body moving in certain ways to hit a ball over a net. That's it. So it's very mechanical. And it's obvious that I did it much better. And therefore, they submit surrender to your capacity. Whereas how do we show ah, these guys, these beings are very different and they're living differently. And it's that thing of, do we want to be like them? You know, look how they live, what they're doing. Is that a model for me? So I'm, yeah, I'm interested in what, what it is inside me in terms of work I've still got to do, shadows or other stuff that I'm not, um, you know, flowing easily and everything comes to me. Mm. I mean, if anything, I would, <laughs> I would just say what I, I told you before about don't take your eye off the ball in terms of there's a distinction right between here's my work and what I'm doing specifically in my creativity. There's your creativity and what you're doing and we can support that or I can support that. And then there's the, the shared synergy creativity of what we're doing together. And those three distinctions are the big distinctions to me in life around around the work and whatever occurs. And so not to, let's say that game to me is, is in the category of your work. It's just you and you need support for your work. And let's say Chris's work is over here and you're bringing in your stuff. And then in the middle is, let's say you teaching and kind of blending, blending everything, but you're still sort of bringing other people's ideas and stuff in. And I think at least for me, because a lot of my work is kind of like I'm using my work to help other people or I'm, I'm saying, here's a framework, you know, to be like me, just use this. And if we all use it, then, you know, we're going to have a shared mental framework for doing some stuff together. We don't necessarily have to sort of <laughs> be me. And, you know, the distinction, right, between, as you're saying, between like a Michael Jordan, who's like so freaking good and he's just going to teach you, but in mental, in the internal world you know how much can we share how much do we share and how much is that being taught in regards to you know I, I think that you know there's a i just see a huge difference of people who want to let's say build a community have a piece but they want to build a community versus people who just want to teach a course make some money utilize their knowledge help people but they're not necessarily wanting to interact with them and I think maybe what you're doing is because of Chris and because of the shared reference point that you ultimately want to create a community of people that are learning together. And maybe, and it's funny eh, that he's dead and I don't know if he did it beforehand, but I always thought that once you're dead, then other people can actually start to use your stuff because you're not in the way anymore. Well, yes, it's interesting that, that he was the, the greatest asset and, and the impediment to all of it. Um, <laughs> because engaging with the work is fine, but to engage with the person who is doing the work, that was the hardest thing for him. 
And so his vision was, some, was always uh, to set up a physical place in the Pyrenees where people would come and there would be courses and trainings on specific things and walks in the Pyrenees and lovely lunches and evenings and dinners and good stuff. That, that was basically what he wanted. Um, with the idea of guiding people into a, a different way of perceiving the world and themselves. That, that was it. Rooted in, as, as, as somebody said, said, a guy called Phil Hanlon, a professor of public health for Scotland, who, you know, very nice guy, interesting guy, said, you know, he's, you've got such a massive hinterland. So the information in Chris's, you could feel it. You're talking to someone who has enormous knowledge, not only now, but of access to huge amounts of content. Um, I'm not that fond of Akashic Records and those kind of things, but he could access all sorts of information from anywhere and you could feel it. Therefore, for me, I, I, I okay, I'm using the language of games, but it's just like, okay, I will enter that world for a while, experience it as if it's a new country, like going to France. What's happening here? Oh, this is the language they speak. So if I was entering into, you know, Elijah's world and, and you're afraid this is how this is how we live here this is the structures we use and this is how we communicate and this is what's going on you know spend some time here you know enjoy yourself learn grow try stuff out I, I think that's going to be for me and if that can be physicalized in terms of for example Vancouver if that's where you feel that your physical base is that that's where there's some kind of building or place where a new kind of learning community can can exist where people can either go and spend a day or two or or live there i think living yeah i think people have to in in the, what's coming is that people are going to go and visit places and see or observe and directly experience people that are living in a very different way yeah as you see people going into corporates and doing courses for a day. What's, what's that for? I mean, it's just, as you say, it's no money. But if they're going to see new communities and how they're evolving and the thing as well as I, I do, there's, there are many eco villages and all these things evolving and emerging that are mainly about escaping from. You know, it's an escape from, not a movement towards. So it's not... I want the freedom to do this, this, and this. No, I want to be free from that. Right. Because when you're free from that, you never say, okay, what are we doing? It's, well, no. <laughs> this is, I live, and I want to live in a community where people are consciously creating and living and shadowing and a bit like what Gurdjieff was trying to do yeah. and JG Bennett, what they were doing with their spaces. But for me, Gurdjieff was more of a sort of, spiritual totalitarian you know he was <laughs> now now it's like would you leave me alone man? yeah causing fights on trains you know just getting people to be really agitated by his presence that very very cheeky naughty behavior but there are I mean, there are different methods of course in, in, in zen you know get hit over the head all the time every 25 minutes or two days or have to sleep on a bench and eat half a carrot a day you know that's another game which I'm not, no thanks well as soon as you get people who are let's say seeing you as a teacher and you have permission to do anything right with them where your your word goes i mean hey i could tell you to go do 300 push-ups every day i'm not doing it but i can tell you <laughs> if you did them you'd become a superman you know and that's the funny thing is you know it's just like if we actually listen to the people around us they actually had a say like we all had a say in someone else i think we do great you know but we're you know we, we get so kind of nobody's telling me what to do really because <laughs> we are in our sovereignty but deep down you know you know our best friends can tell us exactly what we can do to really succeed and if we did them we 
we would do well, but we we don't. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, I would. I forget if I was reading this when we last spoke, but I'm I'm reading this book by the wonderful Rob, Robert Anton Wilson, who's. I think I'm, I'm sure he's dead now, but. Uh, Rob Art Raw, as he was called, or Bob. I mean, he 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 basically wrote a book a year and uh, published by the same publication, New, New Falcon Publications. And there's a whole bunch of them that, that knew each other. And it, it's wonderful because the first, uh, the first, the first, <laughs> the first part's called who's in charge here. It's great, you know, who decides? So the quote is, where is it? There are no authorities, whatever, no president, academy, court of law, Congress or Senate on this earth has the knowledge or power to decide what will be the knowledge of tomorrow. And then this is all about Reich, who was imprisoned and, and he had all his scientific papers uh, confiscated and burnt. Uh, Willem Reich, all, all that stuff. And that basically, as he said, the US Constitution talks about, you know, no laws shall interfere with freedom of speech. Uh, whereas, actually, <laughs> I mean, some laws can, but no, not no law. And, and he says, excuse me for my ignorance, but I thought no law meant no law. It doesn't mean some laws. So what's going on here? And incredible. So it's a very, that was in the 80s. So the 80s, I thought he was a little bit earlier. So that was well, Reich, no, Reich was the 50s, but that Robert Anton Wilson wrote that in the 80s because the FBI, I think, released the or they were able to talk about it without being imprisoned. <laughs> uh, the, the US government, like, if you made a list of everything they've done, you know, they're the most evil. <laughs> country that's ever existed like them in rome are like head to head with like insanity yeah roman stalin and all sorts of um, i guess they'd be up there too but but it, the funny thing is is just like again the entertainment industry which sort of hides it or glorifies it you know it's just it's so effective at sort of brainwashing americans into thinking that they actually are good people you know or they're the good guys well, I think a lot of them are. I mean, I've met a lot of Americans that they're not that. They're not. They're not that. Not that bad. It's just they've been. I mean, I had a friend uh, in Germany, and she, she made a very good point. And it's the same for every country of the past decades. Is that if you are raised from birth to salute the flag and believe that you're the greatest country in the world, then you are programmed to believe that. Yeah. And it's very difficult to unprogram that. And usually I've met, I mean, any Americans I've met who've lived in Europe fundamentally change. They realize how different Europe is. And it's very difficult to understand European mind unless you've lived in Europe, not visited it, I mean, lived here. Right. And Britain, as a mind is very different from the rest of Europe. The mind here, the group think, the way people are culturally programmed, the land, the the geography, the the spirit of place, it's so different in every country here. And the history of all the of all the wars and all the you know the French, the Spanish, the Dutch, the the English, the Germans, the, the Danish, the, the Vikings, all of this stuff is so packed in. And then the US is literally, you know, 1700s. So how, yeah. And then here we are in the 21st century, picking up the pieces, trying to heal not just several hundred years, but thousands of years of of, uh, of of violence and, and and trusting that something's happening within the well we hope within the human genome that some forms of mutation are taking place and people are going to wake up quicker and faster and 
some kind of new consciousness coming in. Well, and I guess it's probably like in a place like Canada, where everyone kind of escaped. I mean, you know, of course, there's the general genocide that happened, but you know, I'm I'm part of a generation, I guess, that hasn't seen war. Hmm. So, you know, I I grew up with no war. My dad was in World War II, and I you know, I studied military history and stuff. Was fast, I don't know, just fascinated by it. But you know, I don't have a bone in my body that wants to go kill and blow anyone up, like. I think when you grow up without war, you're very different. I think, mm. I think you're right. I think, you know, the, the generations that are coming in. Well, I, I mean, it's just incredible. I think, you know, the amount of worldviews and just the amount of assimilation and, and connection that's happening now, right? Through DNA and through whatever is. I, I truly think we're going through a transformation we can't even comprehend. This is happening so quick. That we're in it like it is it's not doubtful it, it has to happen and we i mean we may turn into transhumanist drones we may miss the we miss the good timeline um but we had a chance we almost well, i had a, a lovely conversation this morning with a friend talking about how these technologies we have and and virtual reality and and these other other tools, you know, as training wheels. I mean, that's been said before, and I know Demendra said that as well, and there's other people who believe that too, like Mark, a friend of mine, that the internet and virtual reality and being immersed in 3D contexts and being able to have digital selves, plural, and also bringing people back to life, you know, you can actually now there's tech that from photographs and from, you know, to, you can reproduce somebody's head right. that looks lifelike. Surely that they won't move as they, as that person did through personality, but there's some kind of be able to, to, to do that in the future. And then take it, if you've got a recording of someone's voice, you can reproduce it in many ways. I, and, but it's interesting. I remember there's an episode of Black Mirror when they had the you could buy a an Android replication of your partner. So this woman's partner died, and she she bought this service and bought an, a you know exact copy of her her dead husband. Don't know if you saw it. it was the I haven't seen that one. The the Irish actor. And, and eventually, you know, she, she realized, okay, this is not the same guy. This, this, even though he speaks the same, he moves the same, he looks the same, he, he's got all the memories of, it's not him. But she couldn't bear to get rid of him. So he lived upstairs in the attic. And she brought, just activated him and brought him down from time to time, but couldn't live with him that's, that's that's a fascinating exploration of what it means to be human yeah. and you know there's this, this the conversation this morning i had with my friend was around the if we are able to project our consciousness into other spaces and have phenomenological experiences particularly with haptic suits and all the rest of it that we're inside a different body as it were and to be able to change your experience and, and not be in a you know a chemical electromagnetic carbon-based form like this you know are we going to end up as you say in transhuman states like inside exoskeletons where we can leap over buildings and put on a you know a jetpack and off we go to new york in 25 minutes <laughs> You know, make sure make sure you've had your insurance because you may crash into somebody on the way you know end up flat on your back in the atlantic ocean this kind of stuff uh or you know as someone else has said recently around who placed the limitations and what is possible who says this is not possible you know 
we do we decide what's possible and what's not so if it's everything's possible yeah okay to, at what point do we say that is and that's not where's the line so if it's like yeah we can all humans in the future we're going to fly you just got to flick your right up flick the right shoulder up quite abruptly 45 degrees breathing out fully suddenly you're up in the air and then there'll be training courses all over the world to do that and suddenly everyone's flying around no one's doing any work because everyone's flying around there's all sorts of new injuries people hitting mountains all that kind of stuff but is it fun okay so we can fly okay fine now what we still have to clean the rivers up we still got to make sure we do this we do that okay you can levitate okay you can make this desk move from this side to that side of the room wonderful now let's get together and it, it still doesn't change anything still doesn't get that whole collective intelligence and living differently and you know you could still have capitalist you know extractive capitalism and all that and be flying around you know sorry you've got to pay your toll before you can get in the air it's like what So we can do anything, but there's still that system in place, which is basically saying we want to control you. Yeah. And we want that energy and it's, it's the sense of sense of power. So how does that change? So the experience of self, the phenomenal phenomenological experience of joy comes from connecting to others who are experiencing joy too. So that that's programmed in. Yeah. I'm making a seven step combo type process board. Yeah, four. Just just as like a prototype for kind of like you know, the thing about the combo types is they're fine, but they're best when they're put into a process and you go from one to the other, that's that's where the excitement comes in, right? To go from a clearing into a healing, yay. <laughs> uh, but it's, I was just thinking about, you know, again, the game or sort of like I'm noticing an attachment in me of going, oh, Graham should go get his, his game going. And that's, that's this best thing he's got. And then I'm thinking, well, why? Why should I give a shit? I mean, that's the problem I run into all the yeah. time. The people are going, why do I care about what anyone else wants to do creatively? And then I go, well, wait a second. You, you want to build a shared knowledge community, you want to change your world. So you want to use the info matrix as a structure, which they're missing so they could use that. If we use it all, then we could build something which works for us all, right? But, you know, I like building little things. Like I like creating things, but I, to take them into the market. Like I've had the card sets for probably 14 years, 10 years, 12, like whatever I had. I printed them, sent to 28 people. And I didn't do what most people would do in terms of do write the manual, get it online, create some program and sell it, right? It's, it's, and I, you know, and I just keep doing this with all these different prototypes and, and ideas and stuff. And I, now I've just been spending time on website and kind of going, okay, well, like, I'm going to put it together. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm trying now. I'm trying now. I'm trying. And, but it's just like fucking overwhelming the amount of work just to get these pieces because I can't just work in a straight line and go do that, do that, do that, do that. I, I have to kind of constantly be moving between different sort of projects and people. And it's a madness. Like it's, it's a, it's a creative madness. And that's why, like, for me, the shared knowledge community, I just want to give this to the team. Now go take it and do it. And the deal's done. I don't have to worry about paperwork. I don't have to worry about anything. I just, you know, this has been taken care of. And so it's like that desperation to create this new paradigm infrastructure because I can't exist in the old one. And I'm not existing kind of well as it is. And so I, you know, and I just see so many other people like me who are kind of like, can create amazing things, but they don't want to do all the logistics and the legal and the lawyer and the accounting and all the other things that, you know, normal corporations do. Well, I, I also think that in, in general, for, you know, for example, 
the vast majority of the world, even if I take Britain, most of the people that are most likely going to be interested in anything we're talking about, we've never met them. There's millions of them. They have no idea we even exist. Yeah. And uh, people like you and I and Gregory and the, the, the hundreds of others, the Juan Carlos is that, you know, the, the, and he knows hundreds and, you know, all of them have, um, it's a huge network of people and, and many of them have, like, let's say traditional roles as well. They've come from academia or they've had some kind of engagement with UN or NGOs or, or some kind of work that they've done that they connect to and, but the real passions is, is a new paradigm stuff. And, and then it's like, well, what is the new paradigm exactly? Who decides what it is? It's not as if usually, you know, only maybe 20, 30 years after it's fully come in. I don't think it's fully in yet. Yeah. Um, therefore, it's the whole, you know, smash and grab of people trying to define what something is giving the impression that they're knowledgeable and clear and in control of what's going on so that others who have no idea what's going on go, ah, I'm going to go and listen to that guy or I'm in tune with this person. And then whatever that person says, I'm just going to believe it myself because I, it's too difficult to think for myself. I don't have the tools to think about this and it's too much. So I'm just going to listen to what Elijah says or Graham says, or, and, and I'm just going to go with, with that guy. I get too confused if I start listening to too many people. And for me, I've seen people who mainly have, through their work, dominated certain spaces, creating this mass, literally massive information that has gravity, which attracts people. And the more people that come to us, got more and more weight, which then attracts even more people and more and more people. And, and then there's no way of, you know, you've got to orbit it and get involved. But then if you go to the heart of it and then the person dies, who's run it, then suddenly it all goes poof. Yeah. And maybe that's just a mirror of evolutionary process. That ultimately somebody's got to make the initial move. And if if like in your experience and my experience, I've not attracted thousands and thousands of people, you know, I've not written like Eckhart Tolle, you know, or Young, you know, you write one book, then two, then three, then four, and suddenly you've got half a million followers. Um, and the same with Krishna Murti. Krishna Murti is a good example because I'm not sure how many people woke up with Krishna Murti. I think they just kept going along to his lectures and just astounding presence and intelligence yet none of them really got it and that's what he said at the end of his life no one really understood this well that's partly your fault you do uh, take responsibility because of the way you behaved and the way you were you weren't you have no connection with normal people because you've never worked in your life so that sense of these I think the age of the guru is going to disappear quite soon. And the sage and the stage and I had this, I, I, I can't imagine he'll ever watch it, this video, but I had a conversation recently. <laughs> because he identifies himself as a coach. From the outset, I felt it was in a coaching situation. And I made it clear in the email. I don't want, I'm interested in what you do and how you do it so that I might be able to connect you to people with them. But then near the end, I'm just me sharing what I'm doing and near, near the end of it, he, he said this wonderful thing. He said, I'm just getting, I'm just, it's coming to me. I'm having this message <laughs> that you should do my course because it's, I think it will fit. And my heart just sank, you know, cause he hadn't listened to a word I'd said. Yeah. And being an older white male, to me, it's that whole hierarchy. I come from 
this very large corporate background. You don't know, I do. You do my work, you pay me a thousand. You go, and I'm like, that's not how it works, my friend. Um, and I don't really know how to move from that because so many people are in that way of being and working, how to move into the more, yeah, so, I'd like to hear from you now, I've spoken too much, but can you imagine how does that transition happen from that kind of, uh, you know, in a way it's a societal addiction to hierarchy and top down. And... No, I mean, that's, I think that's like an essential point. And I, I think for me, I see like to go from the guru to teams. Like I think I can be a guru to a lot of people because I'm so good at abstract thinking and patterning. But if you look at every aspect of my life, you may go, well, you know, fine, you're good at that, but you're not good at all these other things, which I'm not. And I don't, I wouldn't sort of like be teaching that stuff. So I think to me, it's, it's like, and again, looking at Gregory and spending the time with him and going, we're pounding each other with our ideas. And it's not a question of one upmanship. It's a question of the next piece or this, but you finally got someone listening to you. Like for me, it's just been so long. I really like engaging with people where there is engagement. Like a lot of times you're right. I mean, you're with somebody and it's a one-way transmission. You know, you just know that they're, they're the downloader, you're listening and there doesn't seem to be an interest to go two way. And if most, if someone's like that, I'll generally let them be that way. Right. And if they're very interesting, you know, I want to spend time with them. And if they're not, you know, you don't. But I think the, the, the real beauty for me is like artistic collaboration with people who, you know, are great at whatever they're doing. And that to me is uh, like, again, looking at, you know, your game and me going, okay, I got a place in your game. And, you know, that's kind of like at a very high level, let's say significance for me. That's at a high level of creative endeavor so part of the reason i guess i go i want you to go do that is because i saw my part and i liked it but i thought it wasn't just that it was it was just like that's a fucking great idea you know i want to participate in that like and when you were telling me about it it was just then i start crafting on my end okay well how would i do my end and what am i doing and, and you know that's where i'm if i'm inspired to create that that's the thing i think you're right it's like we're so, for example, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to name names now. I'll just sort of abstractly talk about them. I'm aware that, of, you know, Gino. Recording, recordings and things. Oh. No, no, no. no. <laughs> bless, bless you, Gino. Bless you all. All of you. I, I think Gino is probably the world's best spiritual recruitment agency. I think he does this. I mean, just connects people all day long, constantly. I don't, I don't know what function that plays within the whole global sphere, but he's a master at it. Um, I was going to say that. So, so there's, there's a guy I know. He's 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 um, very senior in a software company and in a, in a global company, and understands VR very well. Um, he's getting a VR set sent to me here. So I'm going to be able to, and he's going to walk me through. Wow. And he says, right, I'm going to take you to Japan and show you what they do. I'm going to take you to Korea. I'm going to take you to, and show you what they're creating, what worlds they're building. I'm going to take, I can take you to bars and pubs all around the world that are now in 3D and VR and just show you what people are doing so that you can get a sense of what's possible. And I'm going to go, oh, wonderful. He then is known in that world, apparently in the VR world, the, everyone's got some kind of label, whether you're, I, I don't know the names of the different categories of people that create, but he's known as a world builder. So I've seen some of the places he's built, you know, like uh, he, he built, uh, because he's doing an event with boats, he built this and it was for a conference that couldn't take place because of COVID, he built this space where, um, there was an entranceway with a desk and there were walls with, with the PowerPoints and they he said, right, come over here now, we're going to look at the PowerPoint. And then it's just like being, it's just like being at a conference, only you're an avatar and a head, you know, moving around. And uh, 
So the idea of basically entering into a any kind of world like that, uh, and say it was Golden Spider, there's a tavern, and you go into the Golden Spider Tavern, and then you know there's a portal that takes you to the kitchen of the castle on the island of Tavishan, where you go into this 3D simulation training, and it's like, what's happening here? What the? And then you get a list of all the stuff. All right, go to the kitchen. There's a guy called Captain Sweet. And Elijah, what's that? You go in, and then you're physically in 3D VR going in, and then you click, and then there's all your stuff, and you click on the cupboards. And then you basically, end, and then, then you, with somebody who could do that stuff, you're creating content and things to download and, and whatever and it's you know you want to play you, you click and then you get paid because every person that comes in they just whether they've got credits when they're in that world and they say yeah i'm going to spend my credits on this this looks good if you want a one-to-one -one with the founder you know that's it and then you get messaged or things like that so for me that that uh, I, I i think kevin kelly's right it's whoever builds the most attractive worlds and if some some sort of Hollywood players or like Apple or Google or these big players get involved, you'll be going in and there'll be all this stuff. But what they'll do is it'll be full of it. It'll be like one giant shopping mall. Whereas what we want is welcome to a world of extremely entertaining personal development stuff. I'm sure Mind Valley, for example, can create a, that kind of space where you go in and there's always a list of always people when you go in. You, pay too much to go and learn not very much and it's all sort of old style things but then there's another place that we can create and the challenge is for me and this is happening as a big debate it's around networks of networks who's naming it there's a woman for example saying we have to get rid of brands if we're going to connect as networks, that we can't, no one can own it and brand it as it's theirs. I'm not sure. Things need to be named. So the, you know, you have a name, I have a name, Game of Now, Time Translator, Inflamates, whatever it is, it's a name so people can refer to it. So yeah. you need that, whether there's a brand, as in a, I don't know, what does that mean? A logo, a stamp. So what? What? What the branding people are talking about is the way it's currently played, the game it's the game it, that they're playing right now, which is more around uh, designing a brand which is ultimately completely created to extract your money from you and take your energy. That's what it's for. <laughs> well, hopefully we'd have a brand or an idea that would empower you. Like, I think the big difference that I see is that you can design things, you know, that really takes into account you know, how to make a better human being, whether through food, through energy, through breathing, through, you know, how you, you know, why are you in here? Are you here to build something or you're, you're going to try to kill or like whatever your game is set up as, right? And I, what I remember about yours was, I mean, you're bringing in the esoteric knowledge, you're bringing in, you know, story with, actual consciousness expansion and i and i think that the people who focus like there's going to be huge divergence because the old paradigm is going to try to do the old paradigm stuff in the new tech but i think people are going to be drawn to you know more loving pay i don't know i mean i'm hoping to be, i mean that's actually probably ridiculous with the amount of people in war games right now but i think if there are some worlds that are built that are like not scams or sort of like great deals, so to speak. And you come out of them and let's say you're a better person or you've done something that you couldn't do. And now you're, you're less fearful kind of thing. At least that's what I would like to do. Yeah. I still, I still think that say clubhouse, for example, I've not been on it because it's on iPhone, but so many people talking about it and just jumping in and out of, audio conversations and only voice only and all these kind of things but still there are people still you know it's all about attention and selling you something so only when people have that basic income so they don't have to worry about selling you anything yeah 
can people just relax? So how is that going to happen? Is it only going to happen when everything crumbles so badly that they have to do basic income, otherwise it's full-scale riots all around the world? It could be that bad. It has to get that bad, but they say, shit, we have to, you know, bread and circuses. There's no more circuses. They can't be professional sports pretty much dying right now. No one's watching it. You can't attend games, whatever, whatever. Where's the joy entertainment? Netflix, no, we've got to give them more. There's no bread. They're fighting this right. Right, we've got it. Right. Basic income for everybody. Okay. So, for example, me right now, I'm in it. We on in basic income, and I'm not. I'm just sleeping, getting up when I want, talking to people like you. I'm thinking. I'm doing that. It feels great. I'm relaxed. Now, if I knew that that was coming every month without me having to jump through someone else's hoops as to what a product. I have to be a productive member of society according to their rules of the game. And it was just, I'll just have it. I could then say, oh, I'm going to spend three years doing this. I'm going to just basically read read every day and explore and meet people and learn about myself. That That's what we have to get to. Well, and, and I guess, again, because like my focus has been on a business system, like, like the inflow matrix of the business system. So it's a framework for business. And the, you know, at least for me, like I just started a course where it's a hundred a month. And I'm just going to do one video per week and they do one assignment. And then after nine months, they get level one facilitator. And I've got, you know, tons of stuff that I can make a video about and do a little thing about, and it's high value, right? So I wanted like low cost, high value. So high, most people can afford a hundred a month. And if I get like a hundred people, 10,000 bucks a month, that should be, you know, and I'm doing it so they get nothing else. They just get the video and they do their thing. So I don't have to actually do something else. So I want to create like a automated revenue stream that's just bringing money in. And, and you know, to me, because I think you could do it, anyone can do it, right? Honestly. So I'm going to do it. And then if you want to do it, I'll show you. Because it's, it's, I think, Exactly what you said. We have to get to the point where we don't have to worry about money. And the people who should be in that place should be the people that already are giving a lot to society. Like I see you as a high value person who's doing a lot of high value, but you're not getting paid for it because the system isn't set up to do so. And, and, and so the idea is within the shared knowledge community or within the idea I'm talking about is everyone helps everyone get their basic money things down. But I like for me personally, I'm like, it's like at some point I've got tons of stuff that I can give away, press a button, another card set, press a button, another card set. Like I've been aiming at things that have high value that can be reproduced quickly through knowledge and haven't created the whole, let's say, bridge or container for the business. And that's what I'm doing right now, the websites. I'm just starting to put everything together to actually do business in a sense, which I haven't been doing. And I've been trying, I think like, I know like you, but I was saying, what's a gift economy or what's it like when you surrender to spirit? What's it like <laughs> the, the, the classic, you know, artist who's uh, living on fumes, but lots of time, lots of time to create, lots of time to actually do things you want to do. It's either doing things you want to do without money or you're doing things you want to do with money. I want to experience the second one now. Well, it's, it's very interesting on that note, looking at the seeds ecosystem, like the seeds as in the currency people, you know seeds? The... So I'm in their Discord channel. I got quite involved last year for a few months and it was all voluntary, there was no payment and I was talking to people intending things and you know, they are really attracting a lot of attention. They still have maybe a thousand active members, people keep coming in and disappearing. And what seems to be happening, if I look at this as, a, as an evolution over time, is that there's a core team of people who are paid fiat, who can afford to build and consistently create it. People come in, get excited, that, that energy is used and absorbed and they say, yeah, and you, stay, you stay in, you'll get paid, but then you, you can't you go and then more people new fresh energy comes in so in a way it's parasitically sucking out the energy of these new people who are hoping for basic income they don't get it then they go the ones who stay and stay in and get involved 
usually have jobs or have time or don't need money. Yeah. So actually it sucks the energy out of people who are fully excited and energized to get in. And if you can stay the pace and live off nothing, then they want to help you. They'll give you seeds galore if you contribute all the time, which is great because in the future that might be worth something. Uh, but it's in, five, in, in five years, but but in order for these people to get a living, they can't. They have to do something else. So, but they're doing great. I think I, I I've, I've got no problem with. I think they're extraordinary. I think the people involved at the core are doing an amazing job to keep it going. There's new things evolving, but many of them, and, and there's a few people who's at the center, and it's their intellect that's driving everything. And that's just the way it is. And, and I, I've got questions around leadership and how do you do that? So the reason I left is because I was invited in a few ways by different times of people to, to become part of an eventually a circle of, sort of uh, you know, guiding energies around that, 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 that when the main leaders were gonna step out of that role, to be a circle and I was invited into that and using indigenous cultural knowledge and all the rest of it and I'm like, okay well let's talk and, and nobody in that core unit approached me and said let's talk so I just said you know I'm not I'm not giving my time to this anymore if you don't want to actually talk to me <laughs> don't tell me these kind of things and all, a lot of the time with these trying to create DAOs and distributed systems and different agreements around how you work with transparency with around enjoyment and everything else I feel as if I'm entering into a process and I'm talking to a process not a person so oh here we go I'm going to get the same I, I know this person is going to say the same thing to me every time I meet them and maybe I do the same maybe I've got my own process that I'm repeating that I'm not aware of <laughs> but the one the one of what's alive in you right now and then they have this whole protocol of how they interact I feel as if I'm interacting with a machine and I just want to go ah, sorry fuck that what's the last stupid thing you did or what happens to that let's just get a feeling and enjoy each other and then say right what do we want to do now what's happening next what do you want to create what's your and then things start to evolve but I just think that's the nature of these systems. It's all very, in a way, I'm going to zoom right out, all of this is is a emperor's new clothes. It's all false. It's all just a bubble. And then the technology will disappear and we'll end up going, ah, well, that, thank God that's over. <laughs> and there'll be abundance and it'll be easy. You know what we're just getting is because both you and Greg are, let's say, focused on the now in a sense of both your ideas. And I enjoy, you know, I enjoy our conversations. I enjoy my conversation with him because it seems sometimes that it is present in the moment. Like we are both here. And, you know, what happens if it just comes down to the best next step? It's like, here I am looking at building this board, which basically makes processes. Like everything I'm doing is actually a structure of the mind outside of the now. <laughs> Again, and I remember reading the Zen book and basically the Zen said, all conceptualization of experience is not real. The only thing that's real is things that are real. And in that moment, I realized everything that I've been doing is not real. Everything I'm doing is this abstract fucking conceptualization shit. And again, it's like if you're on the spiritual path and you, and you come to that moment where the master or something points out goes sorry everything you're doing is wrong <laughs> and you have to go do this <laughs> but i just dedicated 25 years of my life to this sorry you went the wrong way i just have to tell you <laughs> and you know i mean i i could say yes to that but i can also go well wait a second the structure of the things structure things software structured you're doing these maps actually something real once it's software you'll see it's real it, it does something okay so I mean, that said, I, my thing is I go, okay, who's involved? Who's paying attention? 
and who wants to, to sort of, let's say, play, which to me just means paying attention, participate when you, when you like, just sort of jump in a bit. And my assumption has been when we get 20 of us who are all in, who are just like, they're fucking in, you press a button and everyone's, yeah, what's the next thing to do? Because there's so much fun working with other humans that are like aware, conscious, and sort of like bringing in the spirit in, in the fun way, not the... I mean, there's so many ways to bring in spirit, but if you just kind of go, okay, yin, yin, <laughs> that's enough. You don't have to do the temp, like, you don't have to do the, all these things humans do, right? You just have to sort of acknowledge it, bring it in. Everyone acknowledge, bring it in, and then fucking magic happens. That's where the magic happens. Like, that's the true magic, I think, is, is just us talking and, you know, both of us being aware enough to, to be paying attention and that whatever is going to come through now is going to be good. And if we both trust that and the other people trust it, there'll be the sequence of events and moves and conversations and things that sort of really build up to that peak. Wow. Like we just invented something that will change the world kind of thing. Well, I'm on that note. I am not one of those change the world types. Uh, right. anymore <laughs> or saving it or anything i'm i think that as soon as thing i had this conversation with the very very powerful grounded psychic woman who's basically solved the money thing no problem done everything else comfortable and uh I think, well it's there's nothing to do it's all done so it's a fait accompli you know, all the other sort of struggling, forcing, seeing 3D, 5D, it's all here at the same time. We're already in it. We're already in the 5D. This separation, calling it this, that, next, and don't call it, I just assume it's there. And then you, and then it happens next. Yeah. And then, you know, for example, you're talking about you're building that board. Uh, I think next week I've got a, another virtual sofa event and I'm, I'm happy to invite you to to that there's gonna be more people on the virtual sofa but i had this image of okay i love to how do i create a like a, a software thing i could even create a physical one where i've got a board with a chesterfield sofa of a different kinds of sofa that you can have you can spin it <laughs> today we have a that uh, and then a chesterfield sofa basically <laughs> If we sit in that as a chesticle sofa, it's that kind of experience. And other people can contribute their kind of sofas. And I can have the ridiculous conversation with these with these people saying, Do you remember, you know, when you were younger that your parents said, you know, when you buy a sofa, it's, it's for life. I mean, it's a big deal. You get a sofa, you get a good sofa, it's gonna last you 10 years, son. <laughs> so choose wisely, get the right sofa. And then I thought about, well, you can do that. And, but in the virtual world, you can like pimp it. You can add all sorts of stuff to your sofa. A drinks cabinet, you name it. You've got buttons here everywhere. You, this, the imagination is lim, you know, it's limitless. And then to just, and, and that gave me great joy. Imagining all that, of course, it only works if the other people who enter into that want to play with me. They might say, that's a lovely idea glad you've enjoyed it but I, I don't want to play the game so basically i'm playing with myself give me a question a question yeah type of question okay um how many different types of sofa are there <laughs> that's that's a horrible question well I, but that's great because i don't think anyone's ever i've never asked that I don't think I've ever asked that before. But that's a how many, like that's a number thing. You could, okay, well, is this it? How many different types of sofas are there? Okay. Chaos, motivational, and frequency fence. Very interesting. Motivational to go to the core board, inspires people, get them motivated. Chaos to value a state of utter confusion or disorder. Frequency fence, an artificial construct meant to stop perception or keep someone's perception within a particular range. 
So, Mr. Graham, how would you answer that question using those words? How do you mean the all of them, like motivational, or everything that's in that content? Yeah. So basically, what's interesting is the question itself. You know, how much am I? How much do I really want to answer it? You know. Oh, it looks like Gregor is. Is he trying to get in? <laughs> Wait, did you just say you don't want to answer it? No, I was saying. Um, Can you bring it back up so I can see the... We're stuck in, stuck in Facebook here. Can you see this? All I see is your Facebook page. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Some, yeah, there we go. Back to you and I think you've got to... My, uh, I need new memory for my, th I got too many things open all the time and my memories. Okay, just wait a second here. Sunny. Oh, shoot. As you're doing that, I'm, I'm reminded about, I don't know why, why this, it's funny, isn't it, when you suddenly an image comes to you of a scene from your past, a memory, and I'm wondering, because I've not had this memory for, you know, I can't even remember having it. And it's, uh, when I was in Spain, I think I'm not sure I was talking about the game of now or something else with this woman who was a nurse, a friend of my my ex. She's a nurse, you know, you know, bright enough woman, uh, only, only speaking in Spanish, and I'm trying to explain things in Spanish. And her, I could tell her, her entire her entire understanding of how the world is is like in this little box that says, "Oh, you're going to have to, you're going to have to." learn how to explain it very easy because people need very simple things to understand to buy it and purchase it and it just you know i realize that i'm dealing with it's not a consciousness it's a mind that can only understand how life works and under very very limited circumstances and for me to go there you know and there's a part of me that wants to say when they, 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 they don't get it, I said, well, I said well, you know, actually, I've been sent, um, you know, you're seeing a body in front of you, but my, the, 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 the soul in, in here has, has changed two or three times since I was born when I came in. And uh, it's basically Alpha Centuri have sent um, some, uh, you know, um, some energies towards Earth and have selected this body because it's got the right DNA architecture to experience and, and take that in. And and I'm here to tell you that, um, you know, you must change your life. <laughs> and then they go, eh? <laughs> and then I'll just go, do you have any more tea? It's quite nice tea. <laughs> And then you carry on and then in their head there'll be that memory of did something happen there did that happen was that was that real it's and then it doesn't matter you know i always remember this uh it's a, an amazing book a writer called jim dodge and in, there's a character in it who, who basically 
um, is a uh, cracks open safes. And when they open the safe, they don't steal anything. They just leave a note. And in the note, it's a Rilke poem. It's part of a Rilke poem that says, there is no place that does not see you. You must change your life. And that's it. So that nothing's been stolen. Nothing's been taken. There's just this. So if you woke up in the morning, you had, you know, you found in the kitchen this note on your window saying, there's no place that does not see you. You must change your life. It's like, what, what would happen to you, you know? And that's always stuck with me. It's that sense of, uh, and this is a kind of conversation I had today. It was, it was um, my friend who's Indian. He was saying uh, that there's a sort of tests of righteousness, that you only pass the next level when you have experienced and shown that you're willing to um, progress, you're willing to take on your own flaws and your own uh, shadows that you know exist. I know mine. And it's like stopping it, stop now. My addictions, my things, enough, become higher and, and show that I can do it and then things start to unlock. I really was interested in that whole, you know, that these tests of rights. Now that's his cultural view. Um, so I'm, I, I'm looking at that. Uh, so if my um, current stupid addiction is once or twice three so. times a week. I just have finish this. I go to the supermarket and buy chocolate. Stop it. <laughs> wow. I open up a new, a new, <laughs> new world of possibility. Sorry, over you over to you. I, I want to go back to here and the now and this question <laughs> and, and the, the cards to answer it. Now we have a reference point. To answer that question. Actually, as you were talking through the motivational chaos frequency fence, <laughs> I was asking that question based upon the virtual sofa concept. Right. Therefore, uh, what inspires people to get them motivated was the sense of the possibility of, of what a sofa offers, which is conversation and relaxed conversation, which you sit in a sofa, you don't know who you're going to meet. The chaos of uh, to value that state of confusion. So you know, what's this about? What's going on? Virtual sofa. What? What? We're gonna yeah. Sit down. Once the the sofa's full, we're going on a journey into the chaos and order. And then the frequency fence is um. You know the artificial construct meant to stop perception. So. Yeah, to, to uh, you know, do not be limited by your conception of what a sofa is. No, you know, do you know what I got? There's a fence around each sofa. But it's kind of like, like it could be, here's the base chakra sofa and here's the heart chakra and here's the third eye chakra. And basically the colored fence around it keeps it in that vibration. So that could be a cool sort of like a, context framer for the sofa you have the fence and the fence creates the boundary for what you're going to talk about on the sofa yeah i like that and that the one of the challenges of being in a sofa which i i love this is that a sofa is clearly a well my first thought was it's um uh, a subtle orchestrator or fractal alignment or it's a, a a shared organism you know for altruism so that the whole thing is well, you've got to bring your acronym you can't sit in the sofa without an acronym <laughs> that, that's how you access the sofa oh uh, shit Olga's farted again so you basically that's your enter oh well done. You brought yourself an acronym. Now, this is the heart chakra fence. That's, that's so that's a random generator. Whenever you light one up, you, you have the option that you'll be sent to another couch. Yes. 
right in between two people who usually you probably shouldn't be in between. Well, that's the thing about the virtual world. So we're talking about Zoom mansions and all the rest of it and the possibilities. When you enter into the, you know, let's call it sofa world, you, you, know, you know that the agreement is that if you sit there, there's three, three to a sofa. There is a domain that they have sofas for 15 people and that, but you've got to yeah. play pretty well to get to that yeah. room, 15 sofa. That's, that's high big, level. High level and it's a circular sofa. I mean, it's amazing, you know, drinks are free. It's amazing. So, you know, you need at least a hundred acronyms to get to that. But the, the idea of the, I love that you, somehow you say something and there's the, the system recognizes it and suddenly you're teleported to. <laughs> so fact, you're checker, fact checker, fact checker. <laughs> you're in Japan and you're like, and they go, ah. How did that happen? Or like a dog, anyway. Like, yeah, who are you? And they say, what did you say? What did I say? I forget what I said, but suddenly I'm in, you know. I mean, there's just unlimited creative possibilities that I don't think I want to do anything else, maybe, but virtual reality design, probably. I just need to. Find well, that, this is the thing. I mean, this is where I think the, the, the future of people like us who can talk like this, we can. <clears throat> There are very few people who could talk about sofas in this way. So, um, and, and that just goes on and on. In the physical world that we have here, to even turn what we're talking about into something requires physical space, 20 sofas, someone to deliver them. But, but in virtual space, that could be built within a day. Mm. Therefore, those are the imagineers who can just go, hey, Here's a thought, and then suddenly people are going, "Have you been to the sofa game thing?" Mm. What? Yeah, I mean it's just full on. Mm. I ended up, I ended up in a bar in Rio de Janeiro, <laughs> talking to a guy who was in a soap opera in 1975, and it was just wow. Because I said the words, you know. Who knows what happens tomorrow? And that's the line he said in 1975 in Portuguese. And that the system connected us. And I was on the sofa. <laughs> like, oh. Imagine how entertaining that would be. You know? Yeah, like we're like even just this of having like the background. Like I, I'm still adapting, thinking this is better than sliced anything. And, and you know. <laughs> This is, you know, a background on a freaking video, let alone, you know, virtual reality, press a button. Now you're in a new game. Press Now you just talk to the Queen Victoria about her tea. You know, I mean, it's crazy. And then you add in some psychedelics and holy shit. Like, people are just going to be on their couches what? with these machines on. <laughs> on some pills and that's going to be the human race i mean everyone is just i'm going in <laughs> it's like it's suddenly it's going to get bad like, but it's suddenly if you start to record things as well if you don't then you can end up going in and then you basically go back and visit yourself three years ago and have a conversation with your previous self who you can reprogram now with the new tech in the future to say and you uh, and then it just starts to and what um talking to somebody about this is that when you put on because we have evolved in a 3d reality you know using 2d laptops and mobile phones this is not going to change our neurological processes but once we get immersion suddenly we're reactivating stuff and, and then you take it off and then you go i'm not sure which route is which yeah. and and then like a psychedelic is 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 able to um you know do something to the brain that allows you to perceive what's something you know who knows what you know we still don't understand consciousness so uh 
the VR can do that as well. And VR may be the most powerful um, alteration of consciousness we've, that the human has ever known. And yeah, it's one of the people in other networks has, has made the, the fair point, and I don't know how it's going to work is in terms of energy and information. I mean, apparently an AI system can only process like 1.3 trillion bytes of data, which is in, in terms of consciousness is nothing. You could basically produce like a, a room with one single thing. That's what AI can do in terms of consciousness and, and everything around us, the information that's in a tree, <laughs> in a wasp, in a, you just can't reproduce it in a server. So um, these ideas we have, the imagination, you just can't produce what we can see, what we can see in here. Mm. It's never going to be that good. Well, uh, until well, that's not true. Until I think these things somehow we take it off, and then you and I are having this conversation, we suddenly say this, 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 create, and then suddenly it happens tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, I need to get going soon. I'm starving. Great. I'm starting to fade. <clears throat> but uh, great as always just to hear and see you, my friend. And uh, yes, thank you. I really enjoyed the sofa uh, envisioning. And yeah, the, the sofa, I'll invite you to that. I'm, I've got to speak to Fleming and uh, Mark Wagner on, on next Wednesday about you know, and this is another thing, just to end this quickly, is, is like I initiated that three of us on the sofa, one of them suggested we should add more people, bring more people on in. Oh, we've got two sofas now, we've got three, we've got four. Um, we don't know, like, who, how do we choose who to invite, just randomly, this, that, subjects, this, whatever. So I'll, we'll find out and see where it leads. Well, to me, I originally thought we could have this question, okay, how can the three of us sort of attract our big funding? And each of us would get two questions. And then we'd be in here and we'd, we'd go through what we just did and then brainstorm and just use that as a sort of a tool to sort of start things. And thinking that you know, even if you can show people how we did it, part of the funding is linked to, wow, that's a cool software program. You know, they already got that kind of thing. You know, so it's like using the tools to actually go through the process to show the world of, you know, this is what we're doing. Now we're looking for some funding and that's it. Cause I, like right now, I don't have that group you have. I mean, I got a few different things, but I, I would like, you know, to build a, a, a mechanized time translator. I would like to create a conscious communication room. I would like to have, let's say a thousand card decks printed. I would like to have, you know, thousand, like there's a whole bunch of things which once it gets done, everything I'm working on is going to be so freaking cool. Like, I mean, I can't tell you how good the plan is. Like, I mean, I've talked about, it, I show you a few things, but I mean, it's nothing compared to when it really gets going, just like your game. No one can even understand your game till it gets going. Right. And I just, I just, anyway, so my, I'm going to leave you with this. I'd like to meet with you and Greg. I would like to use the, the remedy, but I'd like to ask two questions directly connected to funding. And if you're into that, and if Greg's into that, I'm into that, that's what I'd like to do as a next step. Nice. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Enjoy Salute. your lunch. Thank you.